Pervasive Domotics, The Neo Vatican Church, Backwards Magazines. Panoceania is the hyperpower. That means that they are the number one player in the human sphere, and for good reason. On this episode of War Lore, we're looking at the five things you need to know about Pan-Oceania. This video is not going to give you the full history or historiography of the privileged nation. However, it, sometimes it's the small details that help make something really pop. For example, the return of Martin Gare taught me way more about French medieval life than any encyclopedia or easy history book, and it's basically just about a court case. Speaking of learning about culture, Pan-Oceania is extremely diverse. Early in its history, leadership made the decision to diffuse cultural tensions by celebrating its many traditions rather than erecting barriers. You were supposed to celebrate your own unique practices and think of how to adapt them to the modern era. Seek out commonalities. Everyone loves a game, a great meal, and time with the people they love. However, this wasn't some fancy melting pot. Cultural integration programs, or SIPs, established cultural enclaves as a part of colonization programs. Citizens mark it as a point of pride to support and develop traditions. Just as valued as visiting other enclaves, bringing a rich melange of experiences together. This is made possible, in part, through technology. Everyone uses the Maya mesh to communicate, so translation is so easy as to be automatic. And learning new languages is easy. Travel is cheap. Think about the way that the internet gives people across the world a way to communicate. Now turn that connectivity up to 11. Rather than focusing on Orientalist cultural differences, promote shared values. You're not just Malay. Maybe you grew up on Earth, but you spent time in the orbitals with lots of Americans. You've worked on Varuna with Tamils and Italians, and when you go back to Malaysia, you've accumulated all these life experiences that Pan-Oceanians value. They refer to this as the Cultura di Diamantes, a culture of diamonds. Every individual seeks to perfect themselves by becoming part of the collective whole. If you think people are oversharing on social media today, you'd be disgusted by the culture of Pano. A comlog is a required part of daily life, and most have it implanted in their forearm and access through a link bracelet. Augmented reality contacts, glasses, helmets, or common retinal implants let you see the radial user interface. You're not just on your phone. You are your phone. Almost everyone uses their inserts to record a life log of their daily affairs, or at least the interesting parts, which they can read later or share with friends. Bosses make employees record for oversight purposes. Workers do it to protect against insurance claims. Pan-Oceanians especially are constantly sharing their lives over Maya with friends, and sometimes the public at large. Short clips are common, but some Evercasters post an ongoing life log for subscribers. Speaking of which, I won't spam your YouTube subs with random streams or anything. If you want to hear more Infinity news and Wargame lore, you should subscribe. It would be really, really nice for me. Anyway, some people post full logs of sensory perception. Sight. Smell. Hearing, touch, taste, sometimes more. The actress Candy Double is renowned for her scripted Maya series, where you can experience her pain, hunger, balance, and emotion as she and other characters interact. Democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. A little background on political lobbies. Lobbying is the act of lawfully influencing actions, policies, or the decisions of government officials to act in your favor. Maybe you lobby for prison reform. You might also advocate for corporate bailout. It's pretty common in democratic countries. Many of the countries that formed the original Neo-ASEAN were parliamentary democracies. As the alliance transformed into Pan-Oceania, there was a massive series of corruption scandals called the Canberra case. Pretty much every political party was discredited, and there is a chance for real reform. A powerful corporate coalition had proposed banning political parties altogether, which the people went with. The corporate goal was to make lobbyists all-powerful, but it actually backfired. Progressives added a few key provisions to the burgeoning Pan-Oceanian system of government. Political lobbies were banned from ever being concentrated in the hands of one business, family, or corporation. Lobbies couldn't be an aloof group of bankers. They would have to be public and let in anyone who wanted to participate. This created the system of lobby democracy. Lobbies can be big, small, good-intentioned, or greedy. No matter what, they're controlled by billions of citizens, first and foremost. 
VR meetings, or vermouths, are organized in digital space pretty consistently. You, or your geist, can join and have your voice heard. A multi-layered caucus allows even minor members to be represented and have their opinions heard and analyzed by AI-assisted algorithms. You can belong to as many, or as few, lobbies as you want, although people who participate in none of them are often seen as lazy. Superbia is a conservative group that promotes deregulation, business interests, and opposes O12 oversight. Sphere United tries to foster better ties with foreign powers to try to fight the combined army. You might lobby against cloning research while also trying to legalize certain activities. It's not a perfect system, and it's too complex for any one person to fully comprehend, but overall, more citizens like it than not. Good for them. Thanks to a cube, you can persist beyond the cessation of your biological functions. Virtually all citizens have a cube or some type of backup. Just having the backup doesn't mean you're immortal, though. Bureau Lakshmi, part of O12, has declared that having a cube safely stored is a human right. After you cease, a copy of your consciousness will be saved indefinitely in the dreamless sleep of death. The process of sticking your cube in a new body is reliable, but expensive. Only 1% of 1% of all humans could ever hope to afford it at market rate. Therefore, LF and Bureau Lakshmi intervened, passing laws stating that new resurrection bureaus would have to be formed and would need to give out a certain number of resurrection licenses per year. Those national licenses also couldn't simply be whoever pays the most. No, O12 also offers a free lottery to anyone interested, but you're more likely to get a license if you make nice with your government. Pan-Oceania is a more religious nation than most, with many of its constituents having a long history with Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and so on. The Ministry of Social Affairs just tells various religious organizations to give out the licenses as they see fit. Most of the licenses end up going to the Christian church. Even if you're an atheist, you can work to get a license from the church. This comes from the long list of deeds, good works that bring you closer to God and the community. If you want, you can do them in someone else's name, too. Did your husband die in an accident? You can generate points in his name. The list of deeds gets revised every six months, like a battle pass in a video game. You can use an app to notify you of small deeds you can accomplish. Give an old person a ride. Attend a neighborhood meetup. Participate in lobby democracy. There are bigger deeds, though. Tithe sums of money based on your income. Volunteer at a daycare. Then there are really big deeds. You can join the military and participate in the crusade on Paradiso. If you finish your tour, you end up with more points than any other single activity could give you. The people of Pano are a very forgiving lot. Rehabilitated criminals, disgraced politicians, if you make real attempts at reform, the folks from Pan Oceania are willing to believe you and welcome you back to the fold. Feelings will be hurt, but it's always temporary. It could be as personal as a breakup or impersonal, like criminality. Either way, the blues forgive and forget. This might sound silly, but it's not that surprising. Thanks to cubes and resurrection technology, there's a chance at real, limited immortality. Even if you don't plan on coming back, your life and the quality of that life are both greatly extended. If someone makes a good faith effort to fix past mistakes, Pan-Oceanians tend to trust them. The alternative is to spend decades keeping someone at arm's length maybe longer. That's no way to live in a transhuman society. The weak cannot afford to be magnanimous. The strong can afford to forgive. And Pan-Oceania never wants to be anything but the strongest power in history. Pan-Oceania isn't a utopia, but it's not a dystopia either. It is the heir to the Western tradition. Politics mixes with religion. Technology mixes with tradition. They are romantics, cynics, and love to crack open a cold one with the boys. Thank you for watching. It means a lot to me to see people liking or commenting on my videos. I would love to do more in-depth topics, but I would hate to waste my time on a topic nobody really wants. Now that N4 is out, what are you playing? What are you excited about? I would love to hear what factions you've been playing with now that we have the new edition. Maybe I'll do a video on them. Until then, enjoy your October, and have a happy Halloween.